True CPR from PhysioControl is a CPR coaching device that provides you with accurate, real-time performance feedback. It is simple to use and enables clinicians at every skill level to focus on the most important task at hand, saving patients' lives with high-quality CPR. We'll go over the basics in this video, but for complete directions, refer to your instructions for use, the operator's checklist, the quick reference card, and your training materials. True CPR has a chest pad and a back pad. These two pads work together using the Physio Control proprietary magnetic field technology to measure the true depth of every compression. True CPR has been designed for use on hospital beds, stretchers, gurneys, and in ambulances. It is compatible with common patient worn or implanted metal, such as jewelry, ICDs, or pacemakers. It is intended for use by trained providers on patients who are eight years of age or older. Let's start with a look at how to apply true CPR. Watch it once in real time, then we'll go through application and usage in detail. As you can see, it's easy and fast to apply and use. Let's go through it step by step. You have an unresponsive patient. Verify the patient is not breathing normally and has no other signs of circulation. If there are two rescuers, one should start CPR while the other prepares the device. If your patient is on a mattress, place a backboard beneath the patient according to standard protocols. Then insert true CPR between the patient and backboard. Take true CPR out of its bag. Separate the chest and back pads and don't press on this chest pad during self-calibration. Push the power button. It calibrates and the feedback screen appears when it's ready. The elapsed time counter will start when you begin compressions. To mute the metronome, press the mute button. To unmute it, press mute again. True CPR calculates the depth of chest compressions by measuring the distance between the chest pad and back pad, so how you position the pads on the patient is important. Bare the chest and dry it if necessary. Put the back pad under the shoulder like this. Either side is fine. Place the chest pad so the palm pad is in the middle of the chest on the lower half of the sternum with the display oriented this way. Put the heel of your hand on the palm pad and start compressions in time with the metronome. If the device can't be placed in the recommended position, an alternative is the side position like this. Again, either side is okay for the back pad. But in the side position, you have to turn the chest pad around, like this. Always keep the palm pad in the middle of the chest on the lower half of the sternum. If the device cannot be positioned properly, perform CPR unaided. Now you're up and doing compressions. Be sure to maintain proper hand position and allow the chest to fully recoil by releasing each compression completely. Listen to the metronome to time your compressions. Look at the dial display for compression depth feedback and any alerts that may appear. Adjust your technique based on feedback. Here's how the display guides you. This gray fan shows the depth of each compression. The compression target zone lights like this each time you achieve sufficient compression depth. After several compressions, True CPR determines your compression rate and displays it. If you see this arrow, it means the last compression was too shallow and you should compress deeper. On the outer circle of the dial, this marker shows the depth of the previous compression to indicate how you should adjust the next compression. If compressions are too deep, an orange wedge appears beyond the target zone. On the other side of the dial is the recoil reminder. It's always present during CPR to remind you to achieve sufficient recoil during each chest compression. The gray fan will go away as you lift your hands up, but it doesn't mean you've achieved full recoil. Continue to let the chest fully rise after the gray fan disappears. The recoil reminder will help prompt you to do this. Those are the main things you'll need to keep an eye on during compressions. Follow the metronome to maintain your rhythm, hit your target zones, let the chest fully recoil, and watch your rate. True CPR will count you down to rescue breaths. Three short tones to get ready. 
then two long tones when you should give breaths. Now watch it in action. Immediately resume chest compressions. If a secured airway is in place, press the airway button to switch to continuous compression mode. This airway indicator appears. In continuous compression mode, there will be no ventilation prompts. Anytime you stop compressions, the rate display becomes an inactivity timer. Once you resume compressions, the rate will be displayed after several compressions. During defibrillation, it is okay to leave true CPR powered on and applied to the patient, but make sure the true CPR device and cable are not in contact with the defibrillator electrodes or wires. No one should touch the patient or the true CPR device during defibrillation. To turn off true CPR, Press and hold the power button for two seconds. A progress bar appears while it's shutting down. So that's it. Let's take a look at some screens you might see if you have to troubleshoot. If the reposition back pad alert indicator appears, adjust the back pad position. If you see this symbol, it means electronic noise is interfering with the device. Locate and remove the source of the interference. You'll see this alert if the device cannot provide feedback. To clear the alert, try turning True CPR off and back on again. And remember, True CPR can't be used on large metal surfaces. In any situation where an alert indicator persists, perform CPR unaided instead. After you use True CPR, inspect the device and cable for damage and wipe them clean. A list of recommended cleaners can be found in the instructions for use. Don't immerse or soak the chest or back pads. Place it back in the bag like this. Be sure the flashing green battery indicator light is visible. The light flashes green about every four seconds. Those are the basics of using True CPR. PhysioControl recommends routine inspection. There is an operator's checklist in the instructions for use. Many agencies and hospitals have specific protocols for maintaining equipment, so make sure you follow your protocols. Inspect the device and cable for wear and damage. If you find any, remove it from service. Check the battery readiness indicator here. It should flash briefly about every four seconds. That means true CPR has enough battery power to operate for at least 25 minutes. If the light is not flashing, replace the batteries immediately. If the low battery indicator appears during use, True CPR has less than 25 minutes of power remaining. Replace the batteries as soon as possible. To change the batteries, open the battery compartment and remove the old batteries. Wait 30 seconds. Then insert the new batteries as shown on the compartment door.
close the compartment door securely and confirm that the light flashes. True CPR can store compression data for three 60-minute sessions, or up to six sessions, totaling 180 minutes. When all the available memory is used, the data from the oldest use is overwritten automatically. There are two ways to review the data. First, on the device itself, you can see a statistical overview of the most recent event. Start with True CPR turned off. Press the airway and power buttons at the same time, like this. There are two screens. This screen shows what percentage of compressions achieved the target depth and the average rate of compressions per minute. Use the mute button to toggle between screens. The other screen shows the total event duration and how much of that time included compressions. The second way to review data is by downloading it to a computer where you can review and print reports in much greater detail. Transferring data to a computer is easy. Start with True CPR turned off. Connect the USB cable to a computer with compatible software. Be sure to only use a USB cable that meets the specifications outlined in the instructions for use. Turn on True CPR. Now just follow the instructions on the computer screen. If the device memory is full, the data transfer can take up to five minutes. During data transfer, these screens may appear on the True CPR device. Data transfer in progress and data transfer successful. If the data transfer is not successful, turn True CPR off and check connections. Then turn it back on and attempt data transfer again. If the problem persists, call technical support. And that's it for data management.